Um, this presentation is a little bit about me, but only because I think that I'm not too different than probably a lot of people. So I want you to think back to when you were a kid, like way before you started feeling self-conscious about yourself. <laughs> right. So, um, do you remember? Was there a favorite game that you used to play? Was there any ball games that you used to play? Anybody? Basketball. Foursquare. Dodgeball. Kickball. <laughs> I was softball. Mine was softball. I loved softball. Um, <clears throat> So the reason I liked softball was because I got to mess with people's heads, right? So it wasn't necessarily that I was too good at it or anything, but I love to mess with people's heads. Um, when, you're, when you're playing offense in softball, you get to play with the pitcher's head, right? You get to have this really gnarly batting stance. You duck way down, stick your fanny at him, get the bat way up there. And you shrink that, that strike zone, right? <clears throat> you make their job really hard. And you get to choose which pitch you're going to swing at. You don't have to swing at every pitch, right? And you know Babe Ruth and his um, famous uh, hit that he supposedly called, right? We're not really sure whether or not he really called his shot or not. But one way or the other, that idea of calling your shot is really one of those things that has stuck with me. I liked that idea of being able to be in control, especially when I was young. And so anyway, long story short, I grow up. I have, you know, I graduate from high school. I have four kids. Life gets really tough, and I am so not having fun anymore, right? And I needed, I needed work, so I joined some direct selling companies. Not all at the same time. <laughs> I, I, I dabbled in a couple and then I got really serious in one, but um, what would happen is I realized that it wasn't fun because it wasn't, it wasn't um, feeling like I was calling my own shots. So one day as I was complaining to my mother, who is just super compassionate, <laughs> I joke, uh, she's a sweetheart, but very German heritage, right? So the compassion comes out in, <laughs> in this, this is like what she would tell me. She'd say, well, if I can get it to advance. She'd say, if you don't like how things are, change it. You're not a tree. Right? Her and Jim Rohn, they would have gotten along really great. Jim Rohn is awesome, by the way. If you're ever needing some motivation, look him up on YouTube. You'll have to get past the uh, whole fact that it, everything, he was, he was quite famous in the 70s and and so his, all of all of the things that are taped of him, you're going to have to get past the polyester suits and everything, but awesome, awesome, awesome guy. So she basically listened to me for a little while, told me to get over my pity party, you know, is it done? Now do something about it. So I moved on and, <laughs> and as I was sitting there trying to process what was going on, I realized I had, a, I had a little epiphany, and um, ooh, epiphany, quite an idea. And what I realized was that I was a multifaceted person, and that multi, being multifaceted is actually normal and awesome. Okay? So think about what's multifaceted mean? Faceted, what's a facet? Anyway, what has facets? Anybody have a diamond? Wow. Diamonds are wow. girls' best friends, right? So a facet is what makes the light dance in the diamond, right? Guess what? We're our diamonds. When people talk about themselves, usually they talk about themselves as a one facet person or or one dimensional, right? It's either I rock or I suck, right? It's I'm a winner or I'm a loser. I did great, I did awesome, I failed, I won. That's how usually people talk to themselves and about themselves. And that can lead to some negative um, cycle, communication cycles, especially within women, right? Men are usually, I'm awesome, I'm awesome, I'm awesome, right? They're like, oh, I suck, I suck, I suck. So, <laughs> so what I figured out was I had these, at least at that point in time, 
this was like 15, 20 years ago, I figured out that I had two, at least two facets that I knew of at that point. And really a third one, because I could step back and see the other two facets, and then I was gonna make a decision about what to do with them. And so here's, this is what's kind of my epiphany. So there was, one of the facets was boss April, right? I would, how many of you wake up and you are in charge? You feel good, not all the time, but some days. You wake up, you're in charge, you have all this energy, you have all these ideas, you're gonna make things happen, you make all these to-do lists, and you're just on fire. But then, you also have this other side. I call her Assistant April. I used to call her Employee April, and then some other not nicer things, but I found out that, that she likes Assistant April, so now that's what I call her. So, Assistant April is smart, she's willing, but she is kind of um, paralyzed with indecision. She, she's not very confident, and she can't make decisions very well, right? So, big deal. We all kind of know that sometimes, right? So here's what I, another part of what I realized. Boss April only shows up about 20% of the time, okay? And Assistant April shows up the other 80% of the time. Y'all have heard the 80-20 rule? So, this is a problem because if I am, if I'm not able to do or make decisions or actually accomplish anything or be um, excited 80% of the time, that's a problem, right? And so what would happen, what would end up happening is I would have all these great ideas, I'd make my lists, and I would contact people and get um, things, the ball rolling when I was the boss, but then the other 20% or the 80% of the time, I let things go and I didn't keep it up. That's why I would end up with, I'd have some parties, like one or two parties, but then I couldn't figure out why for the next six weeks I didn't have any parties, right? So what does that lead to? It leads to boss April chewing assistant April's behind a lot, right? because she's terrible, she's letting me down. So I get into these terrible communication cycles with myself because when the boss shows up, she's not happy. When the assistant's there, she's really not happy either because she knows she's not do doing anything, right? So here's what I, here's what I decided. <laughs> I thought, I can leverage the, uh, this, situation because there's that third facet of me. The third facet allows me to leverage the other two. With my awareness of the, of the other two, I can leverage it. So when I have the 20% the time, when, I'm, when I wake up, I'm the boss. This is what I do. I use the 80-20 rule again. And when I wake up as the boss, I would spend 80% of my time lining out my assistant. Now, I found out in Texas that, that not very many people knew what lining out means, so <laughs> I have to explain. And if anybody knows a better term for this, I'd really appreciate it, because I'm still stuck. <laughs> but my dad was in construction, and he, would, he had lots of jobs going all around the city, and he had crews working for him. And he would go every morning, and he would spend a couple of hours at each job, lining out his crew, telling them what needed to happen that day, letting them know what they ex he expected to be done the next day, right? So that's what I would do. 80% of the time when I feel like I'm the boss, I am creating a rock solid plan and making the decisions and I'm setting that path because I have that big vision when I'm the boss, right? I'm able to set strategy when I'm the boss. So that's what I would do. I would prepare all the information that my assistant was gonna need when she showed up. And then during the other 20% of the time when I'm the boss, this is what I would do. I split that up into two 10% sections. Oh, if you wouldn't mind passing those out. <laughs> Sorry, I have a little worksheet. If you wanted to, you can write in the, the percentages and whatnot. 
and you write in your own name under the, the, the boss and the assistant. But I would spend 10% of, of my time as the boss booking parties because the boss is a rockin' person to be around, right? She's charismatic, she's contagiously optimistic. People love to be around Boss April, except the assistant April. <laughs> um, so you want to, when you're feeling that really uh, good, powerful energy inside, you want to be able to spread that. And that's when it, booking parties is really going to be easy when you are feeling that. So I spend 10% of my time doing that. I shouldn't say really easy, easier, right? Because we all know it's not terribly easy. So then the other 10% of my time, I would spend that coaching my downline because they all need to feel uplifted. And if I'm feeling powerful and strong and happy and optimistic, that is when I need to talk to people. So 10% of the time with my, with potential hosts and customers, and then 10% of my time with my downline. Okay, so now what do I do when I'm the assistant? Because that is the bulk of my time, right? So this is how I would break it up. I would spend, as the assistant, I would spend 80% of my time, when I'm the assistant, doing what the boss expects me to get done. Okay, because she's, she's smart, she's powerful, and I'm a little afraid of her. And I want her to be happy with me, right? So she set this strategy, I'm going to do it. I'm just not even going to think about it. I trust her, I'm going to do it. This is our plan. We're a team, right? So that's what I would spend 80% of my time doing. And then the other 20% of my time when I am an assistant, I spend um, writing down ideas for the boss to consider the next time she shows up. Because the assistant's actually pretty smart too, but as you all are aware, she can't make decisions. Because she sometimes lacks a little bit of confidence, which leads to, you know, not having great critical thinking. So, <clears throat> that's how I would leverage the whole April, right? Because we all have those different parts. There's never a cut and dry, I'm a winner or I'm a loser. You, everyone, everyone, no matter how successful you are, has moments when you don't feel super confident. The difference is you leverage the parts, the times when you are feeling confident to set the strategy for when you are not and you are just going to execute what the boss told you to do. So um, there is in the Ascent Academy, now how many of you are in the Ascent Academy? Yes, yes, awesome. And a pre, is, is that a pre-level or a, a, a pre-level? Okay, awesome. So I would encourage everybody to join Ascent Academy. The cool thing about Ascent Academy is that it recognizes the multifaceted parts of a consultant. There is, the Ascent Academy helps you identify, really quickly identify who on your team is ready to work and move up so that those are the people that when you're feeling like the boss, that's the people that you're going to contact. They're the ones who are ready for help. You don't have to waste your time going through your performance reports trying to sort through and look at numbers. These are the people who said, they opted into it, they pushed a button, they said, yes, I want this, I choose this. So that's who you would work with. And then there's the other side of you that needs to work on your own recruiting, your own um, parties, your own sales, right? So Ascent Academy really does include, it addresses both sides of a person and working towards 
a successful business. Sometimes you're going to get into the Ascend Academy, and sometimes, maybe even today, as you go around and you hear things that um, these other ladies have prepared for you, or you look at, at something in, uh, on one of these tables and you think, oh, that'd be so cool. They're so neat. I could never do that. Is anybody guilty of that sort of self-talk? Stop it! <laughs> Don't do it anymore, okay? Because absolutely you can do it. It doesn't have to be exactly like someone else. This is, um, I wanted to share a quote with you. This is from Sarah Blakely. She's the founder of Spanx. And she's actually the world's youngest female billionaire. And this is what she says. She said, don't be intimidated by what you don't know. That can be your greatest strength and ensure that you do things differently from everybody else. So don't be intimidated if it's not something you feel terribly comfortable with. And the, and the next one is from Marissa Mayer. She's the CEO of um, Yahoo. And she said that I always do something I always did something I was a little not ready to do. I think that's how you grow. When there's that moment of, wow, I'm not really sure I can do this, and you push through uh, those moments anyway, that's when you have a breakthrough. So when you have those moments, you certainly can choose to give up. That's always an option. But if you choose to push through anyway, you're going to find something amazing in yourself that you didn't have, that you didn't know you had. It's possible. You don't have to be just like everyone else. Um, so when you are thinking about your business and you are wondering, could I be one of these superstar directors that came up here and has organized all of this? And is just, they're all super thrilled that you're here. I don't know how many of you have taken the opportunity to visit with them, but they're ecstatic that you guys came. This is what it's all about for them. They love, they love seeing you guys grow. So take the opportunity to talk to them. They all want to talk to you. I know it. Um, but if you are wondering who is calling your shots, well, it's a boss you, that too. So a little, with a little Dr. Seuss for you there at the end. But I want you to know that you're enough, that your, the, your weaknesses and your strengths are actually very, very normal. And it's when we learn to recognize them, accept them, and then leverage them, that's, that's when you're really going to break through to, some, to a new level. So don't ever think that you're not enough. You're absolutely enough. You can do whatever you decide to do, and then you commit yourself to actually working at it every day, consistently, every day. And that's what I wanted to leave with you. You guys take care, and I want you to also know that um, Orville and Heidi um, are extremely excited to see your success. They were very happy to let me come down here, uh, mainly because they wanted somebody from the home office to share their love with you guys. So I know I'm not them, but I represent their commitment to supporting you. And I hope that you recognize how cool that is, because they really do have confidence in you. They, um, see your success and it it emboldens them it powers them to it challenges them i've seen them in moments of of doubt of self-doubt which seems odd right because they seem so strong and rock solid i've seen them in it and what they always go back to what they anchor to is the consultants because they're inspired they're inspired by your stories so I hope that you'll allow yourself to be inspired by yourself, too. Take care.
Thank you so much, April, and don't leave. We have something for you. This is from all of us. Careful, I don't want it to, to fall. These things aren't very strong. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, April. Let's all tell her how thankful we are that she came. tickets to put in the drawing box. is Katie Jensen, and I joined Sensi in July 2007, so I've been a consultant for a little over seven years now, and I remember that Friday night that I joined. It was actually Friday the 13th. Um, it was still when you could just join on the Sensi corporate website. Wouldn't that be crazy, you know? Um, but I couldn't wait to get my starter kit, and I was seriously like a kid on Christmas morning when I got it. I ripped that box open, and I was just so excited. Very soon after I joined, I saw, as I like to say, the vision of Sensi, and I knew that this was going to be something awesome. I began having feelings of curiosity of where this new business could take me. I um, was in awe of hearing some of the stories and success of my fellow consultants and some of my upline, and I began to really wonder where this business could take me. I had those feelings of childlike wonder. Think back to when you joined and those excited feelings that you had. What about when you were a kid and how you felt on Christmas morning or when it's your birthday? I know the birthdays kind of change when you get older. They're not as exciting. Playing in the rain and running in the, jumping in the puddles. Or um, I know some of you got to experience the bubbles when you came in. Um, flying a kite, chasing fireflies and catching them and putting them in mason jars. How about when you were coloring the picture when you got here? Um, I have two little girls and when they ask me to color a picture with them, I do. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking of like the millions of other things that I can be doing, right? Like laundry and work and so many things. But I am in the moment with them and I color the picture. And it soon becomes like this contest in my mind, like I can't get out of the lines, I'm gonna make this my masterpiece. And I get, I like feel like a kid again for just a few minutes and it's fun. But somewhere along the way, and I think some of you might agree with me, that childlike wonder kind of goes away. We forget to look at things like we do as we, when we're children. Sometimes it takes a small reminder, like a movie or part in a movie or a firefly, to remind us of that spirit that we once had. At Sensi Family Reunion, how many were there? Awesome. Heidi talked about this and how fireflies symbolize childlike wonder, light. Can you guys remember the others? You can cheat if you're up here. You can read them. Optimism, hope, and then connection, love, and kindness. And all of those themes make up Sensi Spirit. So we're going to talk about each of those points tonight. So fireflies are a symbol of childlike wonder, and they remind us to embrace all that is good and magical in the world. You are a firefly. You carry light within you, and you can do things to shine in the darkness and shine in your businesses. This world is full of fireflies. It will only take time to notice them. Your team members are your fireflies. What are some things that we can do to bring back that childlike wonder in our businesses? It's really simple things like look with open eyes. See the neat things, the messy things, the funny things. When were you last silly? Like seriously, when did you last laugh? Like when your gut hurt and you had tears rolling down your face. 
If you don't remember the last time, then go do it. Do it with your kids, with your team. Make sure you rise in the morning with the spirit you had known in your childhood, that spirit of eagerness and adventure, just ready to go. Wake up smiling. Don't get out of that bed until you have a smile on your face. Try new things. Be bold. Be fearless. Amaze yourself. Take chances. Embrace change because now is your time. Wasn't it beautiful when you believed in everything? My kids are at the age that they believe in everything, and it's awesome. Think like that in your business. Believe in you, believe in your business, and make this business fun again. Be excited and get your team excited. Some things that I do are I send simple little gifts to, um, you can send to your downline directors, your team members, frontline, whatever you decide. Um, and it just really gets them excited. They look forward to it each month. And it can be the littlest things. And I have a few things um, to show you. And then when we do the creation stations, make sure you see some of the other things are over on this table. And can I say her name? Okay, so um, Colette actually um, shared her with me, so I was so thankful. But her name's Jody Kimmel, right? And so she um, makes these for, for some of us, and we can pass them along. And this was just the last, this month's. And it's just a little um, thankful of the little lemon candies to signify fireflies. And then it says, let your light shine. And so all of my directors got these. And last month's is a little shovel with um, just some candies and it kind of is like the seashore and there's a picture of the warmer of the month and when my directors get these I get like a whole bunch in a couple days because they're like oh my gosh thank you so much and it just excites them so um, it's just something fun that I do for them so think of some little things that you can do for your team and um, that will get them excited and motivated again. When you do parties, you can do um, fun games at your parties. You can do themed parties. Um, and that's a way to get your host excited and customers. So my six-year-old cracks me up. Um, she has a best friend that lives next door. And I will hear the door slam and she'll come running into me. And she's like, I'm never playing with Friendly again. And I'm like, what happened? She's mean to me. So I'm like, okay, just go, you know, color a picture. So she'll go and then like five minutes later, I hear a little knock on the door, and I'm like, Riley, go see who it is. And so she goes to the front door, and I hear, I'm going to go play friendly. I'm like, okay. So um, how I'm relating that to this is children, they're so quick to forgive. They forget about the little, you know, the little things that maybe as adults we take and we make really big. So um, in your business, if you have something that happens with a downline, or you have two downline that are kind of maybe arguing or sometimes it happens, just talk them through it and tell them to just forgive and let go and move on. Um, so just like our kids do. So never in your business and in your life, don't lose that childlike wonder. It's just too important and it's what drives us. And as Heidi Thompson said, and it's also on the box of the Chasing Fireflies warmer, she said, shine your light and illuminate your life, your heart and your dreams. Recapture a childlike sense of wonder and adventure. And always remember to never to stop and chase the fireflies. Thanks. Hey, awesome. Um, all right, I just wanted to talk tonight on hope and optimism. And um, I have probably a unique perspective because I worked with Starting Sensi. At very first, when we would do shows or, or parties, you know, we would say, have you heard of Sensi or you want to smell a bar? And people were like, is that cheese? You know, I mean, <laughs> nobody really understood the concept of what Wickless was and it was hard. And we didn't have all the tools and all the great, um, you know, things that, that we have now when we first started. And so we really had to, to work hard. Well, then it started catching on and a bunch of people signed up. And there was one point in Utah where we had like four or almost 5,000 consultants and 
it was going crazy and um, that was super fun and people knew what sense he was and everyone had it on their cars and so exciting. And then it kind of seems like, well, at least for me, um, I had gotten a different car. I didn't put the, the logo on my car. Um, I thought, well, there's other consultants in my area. I don't want to like step on toes, you know, and kind of um, worried about that a little bit. And um, I have been noticing, well, this last, I had earned every single trip except the very first one. Um, and then I didn't earn this last one. And I think a lot of people think, well, you started Sensi, you should get to go on, or you know, you get special privileges or whatever, but I get to do exactly like you guys. I have built it from the very beginning. And so when I didn't earn that, I, I was like, what in the world? You know, I did earn for one and, um, and went to convention, but I didn't earn Greece. And I'm like, what is my deal? Like, is Sensi just kind of being more, you know, mellow or people buying them at Walmart? You know, I kind of started to question um, myself. And anyway, I totally had the, the boss talk <laughs> with myself and I'm like, okay, Colette, what are the things that, that you've been doing to build your business? And I think why I'm telling you that is because I want all of you to know it's normal to have ups and downs in your business. Um, when you first sign up and it's so exciting and how many of you are new? How many are brand awesome? Look at this. So, so fun and you have a sleepless night. Yes. It's so exciting and all these ideas running through your head and, and it's so much fun. And um, I think I had just kind of lost a lot of that. Um, so I want to talk on hope and optimism and how I got that back because right now, like, I'm on fire, there's no stopping me, and <laughs> it's going crazy. So um, anyway, I had decided, I, I thought, you know what, when you're brand new, you have a launch party, right? And you invite everybody that you know, and um, so why can't I relaunch my business? Why can't I do that? And honestly, it had been a lot of years since I had done my own open house party. So I'm like, all right, I'm going for it. And I'm going to just kind of walk you through the things that I did um, because it was crazy and everybody can do this, you guys. It was the greatest thing ever. So I um, put together some invitations and um, I don't know how many of you have seen these awesome ones in the Scentsy Family store. Um, you open up the invitation and right along here totally smells. It has a, a scent inside it. So they open up their invitation, automatically smells. Um, there's a little teaser. It walks through how you how Sensi works, and um, I ordered these. I'm like, this is the greatest thing. They get a little sample of a catalog. They get a smell Sensi right off, and they're darling. So I ordered those, and then um, I printed up my own little insert that I put inside. And here's a picture of it. And I am happy to share this with anybody that that would like it, but. Um, I, this is the front of it, and I did the little smell and rub sticker on there too, so everything smelled good when they got it. Um, and I put on here, um, you can order anytime during the party, um, and your order shipped to you, and you know, can't make it to the party, shop online, um, earn free Scentsy, host a party, and it talks about home party, catalog party, online party, all the different kind of parties. This one was in August, so I had the super size kit. Um, flyer on there for join. And then um, on the back, I'm gonna talk about this part in just a minute. And then I put the information on the loyalty program because how many of your customers know that they can go in and sign up and Sensi will ship automatically to them every month? I don't have very many customers that know about this. So I'm like, I'm putting that on my flyer. So um, anyway, I printed up these flyers. You guys, I printed off 500 flyers, okay? <laughs> and it was my goal that I'm not stopping until I have delivered all 500. I know that seems crazy, and you could start with a number that seems manageable for you, but honestly, I put my kids in the car. We drove every street in my city. We went up and down. I'm like, okay, who knows anyone that lives on this street? Well, my one daughter, oh, I used to play soccer with the girl that lives right there. Okay, 
cool, take one to her mom, you know. I mean, we drove around, I did all family, all friends, all my neighbors, um, kids that, that my, or friends that my kids played soccer with. Um, seriously, everybody that I could possibly think of, okay? I, yes. Um, we just put it on the door. Okay. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Because I didn't. I mean, I probably yes, could have not. <laughs> yeah. I'm there. Probably yes. It probably would have been better had I done that. But anyway, so passed them all out. Um, well, not quite all. I had about 50 left, and I'm like, oh, I, I'm not stopping till I do this. So so crazy. Uh, I went to Michael's to pick up a picture and they pulled up my account and they're like, oh, Colette at Scentsy. And they're like, oh, you sell Scentsy. I'm like, yes, I do. And they're like, I love Scentsy. I'm like, well, great. I am having a party. And here's an invitation. And I had them in my purse, you guys, seriously. And then I would walk away and go, I can't believe I just did that. Oh my gosh, tell me out of my comfort zone. I'm crazy. So I, I served the lotta and um, I'm at the grocery store buying all the strawberries and everything and the ladies are bringing things up and, wow, looks like you're having a party. I am having a party, as a matter of fact, you know, and seriously, guys, I was so afraid and, and that is, I mean, my kids are like, mom, seriously, did you just do that? But it, I was determined, okay? And um, anyway, I did the party two full days, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, a whole weekend, okay, and that's, but I had totally staged my house for this, okay, I had, I did directional signs with balloons so people knew how to find my house, I had um, the sign on the door, open house here, you know, and when they first came in, I had the door prize box with the firefly warmer there, and said, enter my drawing, you know, and then they went from there in, and I seriously went through every single, how many of you are hoarders with your Scentsy stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. And there was one, I was going to try and save one of every single plug-in that had ever come out, and you know, it was overrunning me, really. <laughs> so I got really brave, and I started setting stuff out, and I put up tables and just decorated really cute. We um, served a lot of which I'll get to that in a minute. That was super fun. Anyway, I'm like, okay, I have everything ready. <sighs> I hope someone comes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a little worried, like, either a ton of people are going to come or no one's going to come. But really, my whole thing with doing this, we have so much opportunity still with Scentsy. You guys, say that with me. We yeah, have so, so much, much opportunity, opportunity still yeah. with Scentsy. It is still a baby. We're only 10 years old, okay? And as I got thinking, why didn't I earn the trip? What is my deal, you know? And um, I'm like, okay, Velada. Number one, Velada is a tiny baby. We're, we have huge opportunity with Velada. Number two, international expansion, okay? All these countries, they've opened up these countries, and I'm like, okay, well, I was born and raised in the same home until I got married, and then I, you know, but now I live in Centerville, and I don't know anyone in France or Germany or Ireland or anywhere. So how am I supposed to recruit people, okay? Well, at convention, my husband was talking to another superstar director who has been recruiting really well in other countries, and he's like, what are you doing? Like, what's your secret, you know? And they're like, we talk to people. And I'm like, well, I got a mouth, and I can talk to people, and I love Scentsy, so what am I doing? So that is what's on the back here, and in your handouts, I printed this off so you can see it. It's a little bit blurry, but um, you can kind of get the hint. My goal, I was like, I don't care if I sell one thing at this party. I really didn't care about the sales. I wanted bookings, and I wanted recruits, and I wanted email or um, addresses and names of people in other countries that love candles. That was my goal, okay? So I had this picture right at the cash, you know, where I was gonna fill out the order forms and cash people out, the picture of the international expansion. And um, I was determined, I'm gonna ask every single person that comes to the open house who they know in another country, okay? So, it was awesome. Two days, seriously, by the end of the second day, I couldn't walk. I admit it, I was so tired. My feet were tired. I was high energy for two days, but the awesome part about doing it for two days was I had 
them coming and going at all different times throughout the days. So I was able to spend a little bit of time with them. And this is what I said, you guys, thank you for coming to the open house. I'm so glad we totally have food and you've got to try balada and welcome, come on in. Um, we have the fall catalog, all the new um, Christmas. And this was even before all the fall stuff. This was in August. So anyway, um, I'm like, come in, check everything out. And then I said, did you know Sensi has gone international? And it's in these countries. And I pointed out and just got talking to him. Well, it was crazy, you guys. <laughs> I, I have my little notes so I can tell you. I had... 127 people come and place orders and I had by the end of August three people who had gone right on and signed up um, right then so three new recruits in August I booked five parties by the end of, um, of the, the open house which now I have had more I also had this um, take me home earn free Scentsy and take me home earn free Velada I had um, party bags ready to go um, at the time. And you can check those out, what I put in those and everything. But um, since then, I've booked more. Um, I have so far sent out 17 seed kits in all different countries, and I have 19 more leads to follow up in in different countries. You know what I found out, you guys? People know people in other countries, and they love Sensi. <laughs> And it wasn't Sensi that was slowing down. Guess what? It was me, okay? And once I realized that, I'm like, okay, 127 orders sold. I'm not gonna tell you how much I sold, but it was crazy awesome. But it totally um, reaffirmed to me that people still love Sensi. It's awesome. People are crazy about it. And in Utah, we have a huge opportunity because there were so many who signed up and then a lot that have gone away since then. So guess what? There's all these customers that are looking for you and wanting more Scentsy. So it's your job to go out and totally find them. And I know you can. If you relaunch um, on the handout, it totally talks about um, what to do to relaunch and launch your business. I promise you guys, if you go through this and really do this, call the people, follow up on the leads, um, talk to them, be excited. Really, your enthusiasm shows to your friends, and you will be amazed at what you can do. Also, the trip for this year is based on mostly points and a little bit on people moving up. You guys can do it. This is the crazy busy time for all of us, and so my advice is go for it. Set your goal. Decide what you want out of Scentsy. Do you want it to be part-time? Do you want $500, $1,000, what do you want a month? You want a car payment, a house payment, and then don't let anything stop you from that. Set the goal, put it on a dream board, look at it every day and go for it. And I promise you, you can achieve anything you want if you are willing to work hard and go for it. So I am totally here to help anybody. I love when people call and ask questions and I love to help anything that I did or, or, um, or any of the flyers or anything, I'd love to help you. Oh, this was also really quick. I know I'm out of time. Um, I did sparkly folders for the recruit packets. I had these already all made up. The, they're on the um, table so you can see what I put in them. Velada was um, silver and the Scentsy was purple. And then, um, super fun, at the door we had, I call them taste and try um, little packets. It had the fall catalog in it. Um, a little wax sample, and I did a sample of the washer whisk. Seriously, people try this and they're addicted. Like, love, love, love the washer whisk. And this just made the bag smell good. People loved it. And they felt like they got a little extra present when they um, when we checked them out. Um, Velada was amazing. I sold that day every single thing that I had of Velada in my house, even the warmer that people were eating out of, I'm like, I'm all out of a lot of warmers. They're like, well, can I buy that one? I'm like, sure, I'll just, you know, it's the one I've been using for four years or whatever, but anyway, so um, did the little Velada catalog, um, put in a cute little thing with some um, chocolates in there, and then this is all back on the table, but a little um, sample with the, the spices, and I can share these little templates, but they um, all left like, oh my gosh, we got this fun little, um, 
little treat and it was totally awesome. So anyway, love you guys. Thank you for coming and taking time out of your schedule. You guys are awesome and dream big. You can do it. <laughs>